I like visuals that have a sort of analogue or CRT look, so I've done a lot of experimentation to find ways to achieve this look in Touch Designer, and I've gotten some results that I'm pretty happy with. These are three examples that I've made that use similar methods. I'm going to focus on showing how to make this one, and I'll briefly comment on how to make the other two as well. There are two key parts to this look, there's the underlying visuals and then the post-processing step that adds the analogue effect. The underlying visual basically consists of noise put through quantization with the limit top along with these two circles that have random vertical motion, and then this is plugged into a chain of a few operators for post-processing. So I'll get rid of all this and start building. So first of all I'll get a constant chop to define the resolution. I'll go with 1080 by 1080 for now. I'll get a null and view it. Now let's start with the background. I'll press Shift B to get a box so that I can section out the network so it's just a bit more organised. I'll get a noise top and set the resolution. Now I'll set the parameters and I'll plug this into the null so that we can see it. Now I'll make it move in the x direction and a little bit in the z direction. and I want vertical stripes, so I'll set the Y scale to zero. Now I'll get a limit and set quantize position to round, and adjust the step. Now I want to make the offset move around randomly, so I'll get a noise chop, make it into a single sample like so, now I'll make it change in the z direction and I'll adjust the parameters. Now I'll get a limit chop, set the value to round, and then I'll get a null. And I'm using this to control the offset, so I'll put the chop reference in here. Now I will copy and paste the noise top and adjust the seed. Now I'm going to copy and paste all this, including the limit top, and plug the copied noise into it. So now I need to change the chop reference in this limit top, and I'll also change the seed of the noise chop. Now I will add in a composite top and change the operation to overlay and I will plug in the other noise. Now I'll copy the noise again and this time let's make the x scale 0 to get horizontal stripes. and I'm going to just make it transform in the Z direction. I'm going to use the Python function round to quantize the value, and now I'm going to adjust the parameters to make it smoother. Then I'll plug this into the comp top. 
Now you'll see that this isn't very smooth, so I'm going to change the pixel format to 32-bit, which should fix that. Now I'll add some blur. And let's add color with a lockup and a ramp. I'll define the colors roughly as I had them previously. Now what I'm going to do is add a transform top and I'll copy this noise, make it random, make the seed continuously change. And make two channels called X and Y. Then I'll put this into a math chop and change the range to be really small. Then I'll put this into a null and I'm going to reference the chop in translate x and y. I think this high frequency shaky movement makes this feel more like a film reel, which is cool. So now let's create those circles that I had on top. So I'll create another nice box with shift B. I'll get a circle top, set the resolution. and set the radius to be 0 0.2. Now I'm going to get a transform top and set it up to have that shaky movement like the background, only I'll make it slightly different so that they move independently. Now I'll get a comp top, set the mode to screen, and plug in the circle and background. So I want it to move up and down randomly, and then sort of snap to the center sometimes. So let's get another transform top to do this. And I'll copy this setup, then I'll just make it a single channel Y. Then I'll change the type to sparse and change the seed and other parameters. And I'll export the chop reference to the Y transform. And I'll make the range bigger. So that's randomly moving up and down. I'm now going to get a constant chop and a switch and plug these in.
Then I'll copy the noise, change the parameters, Then I'll get a limit and change the value to round and the step to one. So you can see that this now randomly switches between zero and one. So I'll plug this into the switch index. So we are now switching between the noise and the constant chop. Now I'll add a null and swap out this chop reference. And there's something wrong here. Okay, it's the channel name, it needs to be Y. So now you can see that it sort of snaps back to the middle sometimes. Now I'll get a flip top and plug it into the comp top. And I'll switch on flip Y. So now we get a mirrored version of the original circle. So that's the main visual setup. But now I'll show the post-processing. So I'll do shift B for another box. First, I'm just going to get a level to adjust the brightness. Then I'm going to go into the palette and find RGB delay. And I'll adjust the delays. As the name suggests, this separates the red, green, and blue channels and delays them by the specified amount. Now I'll get a lens to store and adjust the parameters to roughly what I had before. This adds a subtle curve similar to a CRT monitor. Now I'll add bloom. This gives the most dramatic effect out of all of the post-processing steps. It gives this kind of glow to the brighter areas of the image that's kind of like light coming out of the screen and bleeding into nearby pixels. At the moment it's too intense, so I'll adjust the parameters. I'll change the glow color to white and I'll go into the glow ramp and change these colors to white as well. This introduced a change in opacity so I'll add a transform top and get a black background. And I'll add in an HSV adjust. I don't think I actually use this in this case, but you can see that you can say change the hue offset and get different colors. You might also want to change the saturation. Now this looks good, but I like making things a bit grainy, so I'll get a noise top. Change the type to random. Set the resolution. Make the seed change. Then I'll get a comp top. 
change the mode to add, and finally I'll change the amplitude and offset of the noise. And that's all for this example. For my other two examples, I used a similar technique, but the main difference is that I also used the tile top, which repeats the input, and I think this gives a really cool effect, like some sort of signal glitch. You can play with the parameters, like reflect X and Y, etc., and using multiple tile tops in a row. Obviously there's also a difference in the foreground component. In this one, instead of a circle, I used a rectangle and I used chops to randomly change its width and height. Then I used the tile top to create more interesting shapes. And finally, for this one, I took an audio file and ran it through some processing chops, then used this data to instance a small circle, and this produces the waveform. I also added a text top, which displays the average value of the waveform. And that's about it. As always, feel free to comment any questions, and thanks for watching.